Welcome to the Continuum Lab. Apart from making MIDI instruments, I'm also a complete 3D printing nerd. I've actually had a 3D printer for almost 10 years now. I built an original Prusa Mendel RepRap machine back in 2011. And I still have that printer, which is the one that I used to print the uh, early prototypes for my Open Horn project. Sadly, that printer has been failing a lot for a couple of years now. And so I finally went out and bought a new one. Uh, I got the Ender 3, which is one of the most common extrusion based printers. It's not the latest new thing and it's dirt cheap, but I have to say uh, for now I am very happy with it. Anyway, as you might know, I'm currently preparing for the launch of my Continuum Lab instrument kit or Click for short. So everything that goes on in the lab has to do with that and the 3D printer is no different. My latest print, this MIDI Ocarina, is the first in the series of instruments that you can build using the kit and which come pre-programmed on the included Teensy LC board. It's also the first in a series of 3D printable models that I will be sharing as part of the launch. But before I get into the details of the Ocarina, uh, I just want to make really clear that you actually don't need a 3D printer at all to follow along here or to make instruments using the Continuum Lab instrument kit. The most basic version is made out of corrugated cardboard, which is an excellent material for instrument prototyping. If you've seen any of my previous videos, then you'll know why I highly recommend this. Now, I realize that this prototype might look pretty janky, but it's actually just as playable as the fancy 3D printed one. <laughs> And of course it's designed so that it can be taken apart completely and all the parts are recycled. The intermediate build uses some of the same techniques but different materials to make a more attractive and durable instrument. More things are glued together here like the keys and the front and back covers. So this is more of a permanent construction but made in a simple box shape that you could easily replicate using many different kinds of materials. Of course, you can still open it up and take out the microcontroller and breath sensor to use in other projects. And then of course, if you have a 3D printer, you can take that breath sensor and that microcontroller and put them inside this cool creation. So how does it work? Well, because the electronics inside each of these are exactly the same, they also function exactly the same. The only difference being the individual sensor calibration, which is what this button here is for. This is a simple four hole ocarina with no thumb holes and I've implemented pretty close to realistic ocarina fingerings to get a full chromatic scale, except for the half-covered holes on C-sharp and D-sharp, which I've modified for simplicity. The octave is produced by overblowing, just like on many smaller ocarinas. This is the only instrument in the kit which will have the option for a fully printed body because most of the others are quite a bit larger which is not ideal for 3D printing. So the rest of them will mainly feature 3D printing in connecting pieces, mechanical pieces, uh, mouthpieces of course and breath sensors. And speaking of breath sensors, let's have a look inside here. We'll take everything apart and I'll show you briefly how it works. These two screws out like that and it opens right up. This over here is of course the microcontroller and all of these cables which are plugged straight into it run off to different sensors like the keys, calibration button or the breath sensor. This version of the Ocarina doesn't use the click breakout board mainly to save space. Over here on the cardboard version I've included the board which just makes everything a little easier to organize and so the final tutorial on how to build this will explain both ways with and without breakout. The keys are also 3D printed in the form of this tiny disc with the little tab on it. These are individually covered in a layer of copper tape and then electrical tape to give the finish that you see here. And then the instrument body has these cutouts to hold them in the right position. I like this solution a lot because in the end you're left with a hole, just like on an acoustic ocarina, instead of a raised key like on the other versions. 
Plus I can use any type and color of tape that I want to cover the keys and the edges of that tape are automatically tucked out of the way, which is one of the tricky things about applying a dielectric layer to these sensors. The breadth sensor is this thing here, which comes right out. The Continuum Lab instrument kit includes one of these in the box and you can use it in several of the instrument designs. This is a very versatile and quite compact design, but the Continuum Lab instrument kit also lets you make other DIY breadth sensors based on designs that I've already shown here on the channel, which I will cover in other videos. Anyway, as I mentioned, a similar result can be produced without using 3D printing. If we go back to the most basic version over here, we're actually using the same components, but everything is held together by the cardboard structure of the instrument itself. The calibration function of the click makes this work despite the difference in range from these two different setups. The 3D models for the instrument itself, as well as the breath sensor, will be published under an open license when everything is ready. And if that's already happened, then you'll find the link down in the description, of course. There will be an official tutorial on how to make the ocarina as well as each of the other instruments in the kit, both with and without 3D printing, but this video is not that. This footage of me making these instruments is for those tutorials and the instrument designs are complete, but the final tutorials will have to wait until I get all the way down the list of instruments and incorporate them all properly into the project. That's because all of these instruments are connected in several ways. First of all, they all need to function within a single sketch on the TNC LC microcontroller. So that code needs to be completely finished before I start publishing. I get into some more details about what that means in the previous video, so you can find a link to that in the description. And if you want to know exactly what instruments will be in the Continuum Lab instrument kit, then you will like the next video in the series where I reveal the whole list. And of course, please let me know in the comments what instruments you'd like to see in the kit. The list is pretty well defined already, but maybe you can still change my mind. I know I've been teasing the click for a long time, but this is the actual home stretch, starting today with this video. In fact, I already went and bought the continuumlab.com domain and I'm setting up a shop and web page there. You can already go and visit, but it's pretty rudimentary for now. And of course, uh, the ocarina is the only item for sale and out of stock at that, because as I said, everything will be published at the end once all of the instruments have been incorporated. So that's it for the MIDI Ocarina, but don't forget, there's a whole series of other cool click-based instruments coming your way, as well as more news on the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself. So please like, subscribe, share this video with a geeky friend, help me make the click happen. And if you might be interested in purchasing the kit, then why not bookmark continuumlab.com, where the rest of the instruments, as well as more details, will be appearing over the next few weeks. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the continuum.